In this video, we are going to discuss the scheduling of processes. So we know that the number of processes which are currently available in the main memory is known as the degree of multiprogramming. So the objective of the system is to have some process running at all times so that the utilization of the CPU can be maximized. So it is the job of the process scheduler to select one process amongst all the available processes for the next execution on the CPU core. So if this is the RAM over here and we know that there are three processes P1, P2 and P3 currently waiting for the CPU and the operating system is also available as a part in the RAM. So now scheduler which is a core component of the operating system, it is the job of the scheduler to choose amongst these processes which are waiting for the CPU to select one of these and assign the CPU to that particular process. And we know that one CPU core can run only one process at a time. If there are more processes, then each process will have to wait until the core is free. So at one point in time, the CPU core can run one process only. And so the scheduler will select out of the available processes to be executed on the core of the CPU. Now the scheduler maintains the scheduling queue of the processes and there could be multiple scheduling queues. One could be the ready queue. The ready queue refers to the queue which contains all processes which are main mem in main memory and which are waiting to execute. That means these processes are available in the main memory and they are waiting for the uh, CPU core. That means those processes are in the ready state. For the uh, states of the processor, you can refer to the earlier video. Another queue could be the wait queue. Here, the processes might be waiting for a particular device or waiting for an event. And the processes can migrate amongst the various queues because when the processor is changing state, so currently it is in the ready queue. If it is running, so it changes state to a run and then it might go to the wait state and back to the ready queue. So the processes can go from the ready queue to the wait queue. Anytime it is waiting for, it is wanting a particular resource, either it is wanting the CPU, so it is in the ready queue, it may be wanting an input output device, so it is in the wait queue and it may go from one queue to another as it changes state during the course of its execution. So what are the ready and wait queues? So let's see, suppose this is the ready queue and we know that the process control block, which is the data structure associated with the process, these are available in the queue. For what is a process control block? You can check one of my earlier videos on this. So there would be a queue header, which would be the head pointer would be pointing to the first process, which is in the queue. And this process would be represented by its process control block, which would have all information about the process. Then the pointer of this particular PCB would point to the process control block of the next process in queue and the queue header would also have a tail pointer which is pointing to the last process in the queue. Similarly, we can have a wait queue and this wait queue would be available for each and every input output device. Again, there would be a head pointer pointing to the process control block of the first process in queue it would be then this process, uh, this PCB would have a pointer to the 
next process and to the next process and the tail pointer pointing to the next or the last process in the queue. As you can see here, the queues have been implemented as a linked list, but you can choose any other data uh, structure representation for this. Now let's take a look at the queuing diagram. If we have a ready queue, out of this ready queue, the scheduler will select one of the processes and will assign that particular process the CPU. When that process has got the CPU, either it will finish all its instructions and terminate or it might require some input output operation. So in that case, it will go for an input output request and there also it will have to wait in an IO wait queue to wait for the input output device. When it gets the input output device, Again, after using that device, it will go back to the ready queue and wait again for the CPU to execute the next set of instructions. There is also, also a possibility that the process was using the CPU and the time for which it was given the CPU, it has expired. So again, it will be taken out from that, the CPU will be taken from that process and again, it will go back to the end of the ready queue. The third, uh, uh, the third possibility is that the process has created a child process and it is waiting for the child to terminate. So it is waiting for some uh, signal or some event and once the child terminates, it will go back to the ready queue or the process is there running on the CPU and it is waiting for some interrupt. So it goes to the interrupt wait queue. Once the interrupt occurs, it goes back to the ready queue. So this is how you can see that the processes are changing queues during the course of their execution. Now, when one process goes for some IO request or for some other event, this CPU will be now allocated to some other process in the ready queue by the scheduler. So this is the task of the scheduler to make sure that the CPU is never sitting idle, but to always allocate the CPU to one of the processes in the ready queue. So when one process goes for some other event and another process comes in, then this whole thing is referred to as a context switch and we will look into context switch in more detail in the next lecture.